All right, guys, how are we doing? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about noise floor for audiobooks, how to handle that, what it is, what to do with it, uh, and some basic tips and tricks and tools of how to do noise reduction. So if you want to see the, the technical aspects of how to do noise reduction, skip to the second half of the video. But I implore you to stop and listen to the first half because I will go over the fundamentals of how to not need to do the second half. So what is noise floor? So part of your ACX specs or ACX requirements or just general industry standards is to have a noise floor of lower than negative 60 decibels, which is relatively quiet. And the noise floor is the noise that is just throughout the recording. So you have periods of your recording where you're speaking, and then you have periods in between where you're silent. Those silent periods, you're not actually silent, or the recording isn't actually silent. We have what's called room tone. Uh, <laughs> noise floor, sorry. Noise floor is made up of room tone, which is just the ambient noises, and that can be coming from lights or PC fans or creaky chairs, um, as well as the noise that your equipment makes. So all microphones have a self noise and you also pick up noise from lines and other bits and pieces. So all that sort of baseline noise is called your noise floor and you need to get that as low as possible. It becomes pr pr particularly pr particularly problematic when you start trying to compress for your RMS. I have a video on RMS if you want to go and watch that if you're confused about that. Um, but basically what's going to happen during our post post-processing before we publish our audiobooks, we're going to take our recording, we're going to lower all of the higher volumes and then lift the whole lot up. And it's called audio compression. So we're going to compress the louder sounds and then amplify everything back up. And when we do that, we get a smoother recording. So our voice sounds a constant volume the whole time. But when we compress and then we amplify the signal again, the noise floor comes up. So if you have any noise in your recording, that's also going to be raised by this process and made worse. So what can you do? The first and most important part of this is to get the best quality recording you can start with. The best thing you can do is get a recording that has minimal noise. Because if you use any of the tricks I show you later in this video to reduce the noise, that's also going to sacrifice the depth and the vocal quality and the sound quality of your voice. The best way to deal with this is to find out what is causing your noise floor. So you can record a sample, take it into your DAW, just record like 10 seconds of room tone. Um, you should get into the habit, by the way, of recording five to 10 seconds of room tone at the beginning and end of your recording for editing purposes, but I'll do another video on that. Just record five, 10 seconds, Go to your DAW, throw a good pair of headphones on and turn the volume right up and just listen to what noise is there and see if you can isolate any of the noises. Hopefully it should be virtually silent, but you need to watch out for heating, AC, PC fans. Some light fittings have a bit of a buzz to them. Uh, phone chargers near equipment. If you have any of those uh, little power blocks, you know, like the phone charger blocks, they, they were sent by the devil to annoy people recording audio. If you have one of them near an XLR cable, you'll get a buzz. So listen to these noises, find out what is there, and then remove what you can. If you have a buzz in your recording, if you have any power lines running near XLR cables, that can also create noise. So move all your cables, right? Put your headphones on, listen to the the monitor from your interface so you can hear what's happening and just move stuff about, move a cable around. If you move a cable and the amount of buzz changes, you know it's that cable that's picking up interference and then you can isolate what's causing it and remove it. Power cables, monitor cables, uh, power blocks, anything like that causes a massive headache. You've got to be really careful how you route all your cabling so that it doesn't cause this issue. You can also get preamp noise if you're using a low quality preamp um, and a power hungry microphone and you've got the gain on your amp turned all the way up, that can also cause noise. But once we've got a nice recording set up and we have a nice quiet recording, hopefully we won't need to do too much noise reduction in post. Hopefully at recording, 
we should already be well under 60 dB on our noise floor so that when we do our post-processing compression, we're not bringing up too much noise. So you've recorded your audio, you've done your compression, and your noise floor is just a little bit too loud. What can we do about that? Right, there's a couple of things we can do. We can use an equalizer. Best use what's called a parametric EQ, which is one with a little graphy thing. Um, and we can use what's called a high pass filter. Now a high pass filter just means that frequencies over a certain point pass and stuff under is filtered out. It's also called a low cut filter. Now, the human voice or the audible quality or audible parts of the human voice starts to drop off at around, on the bottom end, around uh, 100 hertz. So you can pretty safely start to roll off. And it's called roll off because we don't just get to 100 hertz and then cut it. We get to 100 hertz and then slowly bring it down in a curve. And bringing it down in that curve, it sort of rolls off. And because the human voice starts doesn't have much under 100 hertz, you can cut off a lot of the frequencies under 100 hertz. Um, personally, I prefer to keep it more like 75 hertz, as low as possible, because 75 to 100 hertz, particularly with my voice anyway, uh, there is still quite a bit of vocal information in there. But a lot of the rumbly sound, so if you have a little bit of traffic in the distance coming through a window, or a low, ooh, very low rumbly sounds, a lot of that will be cut out just by cutting it off the EQ. So that's one thing we can do. We can use a equalizer to use a high pass filter. Now, equally but kind of less useful is we can use what's called a low pass filter, which is exactly the same principle at the other end. Around 1500 hertz, there's not a whole lot of voice. So we can roll some of that off if we want to. Generally, it's not necessary or required, but that's one thing we can do. Now, if you have a particular noise, a single noise in your recording, maybe there's an electronic buzz, uh, maybe there's a light buzz, some particular interference, occasionally you'll see this in your recording. And if you look at a parametric EQ, uh, and on your room tone, you've got a nice smooth line and then one random big point, you can filter out that specific frequency. Now, you can do it using a parametric equalizer by making a very, very narrow Q width. The Q width is how wide of a band your uh, point is affecting, and then reducing that frequency so that you take that sound out of your recording. This is great. You don't want to do too many of these because it will make your voice sound very thin and boxy very quickly. But if you have one point, you can do that. There's also something called an FTT filter that will do a similar thing. And you can use one of those to cut it out. All software, all audio software, like all DAWs will have a parametric equalizer. I don't think there is any that doesn't have a parametric EQ. They're all basically the same. You don't need any fancy plugins or anything like that. So EQ filter. The other thing we can do to reduce noise is to use a noise reduction plugin. Now, you want to be very, very, very careful with noise reduction plugins because although the algorithms that run them nowadays are shit hot, they're really good, you're still making sacrifices when you use one. The way these noise reduction programs are working is they're listening to your noise floor they're figuring out what frequencies all this noise is at, and then it's removing that from the whole of your audio. It's basically running a parametric equalizer that's perfectly tuned to be exactly the same as your room tone. If you have a high room tone or a high noise floor, and you use noise reduction to try and clean up your recording, it's going to destroy the quality of your voice very, very, very quickly. They're great for making small corrections, but if you overuse them, they're very bad. So there's some passive and there's some automatic noise reduction plugins. Most DAWs will have a basic one with them, um, but there's two varieties essentially. You have one that's automatic and it just identifies the noise and tries to remove it. 
Uh, and then you have one that requires a sample. So a lot of the time when you're using a noise reduction plugin, what you have to do is select a bit of your noise floor and tell the plugin, this is the noise I want to remove. This is the noise floor. And then you use the threshold setting. They'll have loads of settings, don't worry. Just, just worry about threshold. A threshold setting for how aggressively you want it to move, remove, that noise. And so the way you do it is you start, you run the plugin, you start listening through after you've fed it your sample and you just turn up the threshold just enough to where you can't quite hear the noise floor anymore. And hopefully that's not a lot and it won't start interfering with your voice. Right guys, thank you very much for listening to this video. I'm doing videos on all the key points of audiobook production, so feel free to follow along or subscribe for more. If you have any questions about audiobook production or audio production in particular, feel free to drop me a comment, let me know, and I'll see what I can do to help. Until next time, guys, peace out.